Screencasting is something that I've been experimenting with more in, in recent times and there are new pieces of software that are coming out. Um, Adobe Presenter is one of those that allows you to uh, have combinations of the student's work and videos of yourself on the screen. It does require a bit more post-production so you do need to go back and um, it's fairly simple but it does take a little bit longer to do. Um, but that's something that I've been experimenting with more recently. Setting up the, the hardware and the software is pretty simple and we've used a variety of different techniques over the years. Everything from just propping up a, a, a smartphone uh, on the lip of a, a monitor and just having that pointing at you and, and discussing what's going on while being able to, to look at the student's work behind you, to having a webcam um, just sitting on top of your monitor and, and just using the, the software that almost every machine on campus would have, whether it's a Mac or a PC, they all have some, some video recording software that's really simple and easy to use. Uh, and we just frame it up so that the student sees um, basically our head and shoulders and it's just us talking to the student as if we're in, in the room with them at the same time. One of the one of the tricks is is just to find whatever setting is in the software, and you only need to find it the once, and then you've found it. And that's just to make the video as small as possible, so that after you've talked for five minutes, that the video file size is is of a reasonable size to upload. Um, these days, students have got a fair bandwidth, and we don't we haven't come across any equity issues. But by doing that, you know, a smallish video as opposed to a full screen a screen video of yourself is. Um, uh, going to be just as good. As long as they can see your facial gestures and hear the, the tone um, of your voice, then we found that, that that's what the students react to. Almost all of our um, videos or screencasts um, and, and audio recordings have got the same kind of structure. We go out of our way to always give a salutation, to name the person that we're recording for, and that really uh, highlights that this is for you. You know, we haven't recorded this video for the whole class. Uh, the second thing is, is a relational work in terms of often we'll know about a student that they've, they've had an extension or that they've struggled or that we've seen drafts or the first assignment in the, in the semester and it's really good to, to, to indicate that we, we understand who they are you know, and, and recognise that. Um, at the very least we might say, oh, well, I'm glad you've come back from your honeymoon, you know, whatever it is and it just makes that connection and, um, and then we move into an overall statement because students are stressed, they're trying to figure out what are you going to say here and it's really good to give an overall sense of, of, of talking about the quality of the work, not the effort of the student and that's a really important thing. We've got to talk about the performance in the work as well as saying this is a great effort because you know, we can't really measure effort in that, in that regard. Um, so an overall statement and then we get into generally for, for me, I'm a close editor and, and I think you are as well, textual um, issues so we, we get through those, those key issues of whether there's um, patterns of grammar or punctuation or citation style or those kinds of things. And then the real focus, the, the body of, of, of the, the time we spend on talking about the conceptual development of the students, so um, where they've talked about theory or talked about um, the literature in some way or, or developing their argument. And I usually try and choose two or three things as I'm reading their work, I'm noting to myself. And what I want to talk about is how they've expressed, how they've argued, how they've used the theory, where that's working and where that can, can be improved. And this is the key thing, where it can be extended. I'm assuming that the students are actually interested and they wouldn't mind knowing how they could extend their idea, their project further. And um, so I get through that and I always make sure at the end um, to, to finish off by usually um, asking students that, you know, or saying that this, they're welcome to email me to, to come and have a chat. And generally speaking, um, I rarely have anyone who actually follows up uh, in person, but they do send emails often just saying thank you very much. But it's a nice way to finish and, and it, it opens up that idea that this is a dialogue. So even, as the, even though this might be the final assessment in the semester, that it's not just the mark, that this is meaningful feedback and this is how you can keep strengthening. We actually never mention the mark yeah. in the, the assessment feedback. So this is actually about the work and our interrogation with your ideas. This is not about the mark that we gave you. This is feedback on your work. Yeah. 
if a student in their assessment piece has a really complicated uh, idea and they might not have uh, English as a first language, the, the nuanced comments that we provide in our feedback can sometimes be misinterpreted or misunderstood or can be seen by the student as, as ambiguous. They're not sure how to interpret what it is that we've said. Having emotion in your voice and being able to repeat that feedback over and over again allows students to get a clearer understanding of the types of uh, ideas that we're trying to communicate to them. Over the years, students have been overwhelmingly positive about the, about the feedback. And it, it's really clear to us through their feedback, through talking to them, when we've actually surveyed several hundred of them now, um, that they, they overwhelmingly say that the feedback for them is clearer, so there's less ambiguity, which means that they're more satisfied, you know, they're less stressed. Um, they understand where they've gone wrong and where they can improve. It's, um, it, they, they say that it's more caring, which is strange because we care about them whether we write on paper or through video, but I think through the warmth of the tone of voice and they can see that we're actually struggling with their ideas and sometimes we actually do this and we, we gesture and things, that, that they really see that this is a, a person with expertise commenting on their work. So they, they think there's caring, they see it as being personalised so that it's just for them and so therefore they feel supported. Um, and because we frame it up in terms of a dialogue, welcoming, welcoming them to con keep considering about these ideas that they're thinking about how to go forward, but also to maybe come and talk to us again, that I, I think they feel that um, their academic sort of uh, growth is, is being supported as well. So um, our satisfaction from the students has, has been overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm.